So we give them the kind of um, stuff of which they fabricate like an, ex an ex post facto determination that there has been some kind of breach, you know, of um, you know some legal taboo or something, uh, or a breach of what's called the International Traffic and Arms Regulations, a set of regulations which govern the Arms Export Control Act of whatever 1978. One of the kind of interesting and Orwellian features about this set of laws is that since I think 1984, this law hasn't been updated to accommodate for the, the simple fact that there is a thing called the internet. You know. Um, it accounts for an idea of the public domain, which is like a very reductionist in scope. I mean, um, libraries and, and conferences and things. So if I came here and kind of passed out liberators, it might be a more interesting legal argument than if I had directly published into the, into the internet. So we're at the kind of um, nexus of a Cold War, like legal structure, and then also, you know, the, um, the 21st century structure of, of the freedom of, of information and, and the internet. I'll say, I guess, maybe one more thing about this, which is that, Maybe I won't say it. Now you have to say it. Don't get it wrong. Are claiming it's freedom of speech to release these files. They're saying no need permission from us before you can talk. Okay. Is that right? One of the one of the primary arguments we will make if we have to make them, because we're not even to, and you you get the uh, this is the kind of absurdity of the bureaucracy. We're only in the administrative matters right now. We're not even to the point where we can make a constitutional argument. You know, we have to kind of go through, this could be a multi-year thing, and I, and I regret that very much, which is why I've taken steps to kind of retool our operation. We're in a kind of stable zone right now. So we might begin printing again, even if we can't release the files. But yeah, state, state has basically said, and okay, this is a critical piece of information. You should probably know. I'll tell you. Okay. You think you have the freedom to keep and bear arms. All right, and this is something, uh, especially a Second Amendment type, and I don't mean to generalize, you know, about people here, but uh, especially red state conservative type, you know, like that, I hold that near and dear to me. As long as I can hold the, you know, cold gun metal in my hands, you know, I, I have something very material, which is a confirmation to me that my firearms rights are preserved. Well, what you didn't know, <laughs> and what this case can eventually show, I, I hope on a, on a grand public way, through the New York Times, other things too, I mean, I'm working on it, is, um, is that this Cold War apparatus, actually uh, led by the DOD and, and now the DHS, uh, actually claimed for itself the right, the first kind of right, to all generated data, blueprints, technology related to munitions. Um, for itself. The United States actually claims prior ownership of all privately and publicly generated data, past and present, related to class 1 munitions up to 50 cal, beyond 50 cal, explosive devices. So, though you might have the right to keep and bear arms, the smart ACLU liberal will tell you, well, you know, you, might, you don't necessarily have the right to buy them, you don't necessarily have the right to make them, you don't necessarily have the right to talk about making it. So now you know. <laughs> and of course, this is not just a, a theoretical argument. This is the argument currently being asserted by Obama's State Department. There was an ongoing arms export control reform initiative, which is, uh, as we know, reform initiatives go, had been going on for about two decades. And um, there was a rumor, you know, somewhere high up in some extra legal, you know, national security committee, that they were going to take class one munitions, these kind of common guns that were at least still allowed to buy. They were going to take these guns and put them into the commercial classification of this scheme. And finally, there would be like a, a right for us to kind of have the information and trade the information for ourselves, you know, before there was some kind of, a, oh, you know, problematic constitutional issue. Well, no, it, it looks like because of the defense distributed, it's going to be a problematic constitutional issue for us. Um, you live in a state of unfreedom. Welcome to the world. Okay, uh, other questions? Yeah.